My name is Marley Hacker. My name is Kayla Miracle. This is the story of communicating through books. How the Pack Horse Librarians brought the world to Appalachia. Look, Kayla, it's our first group of kids. I can't wait to share our exhibit about the Pack Horse Librarians. Welcome, kids. To start off, we're going to state some facts about why this project was so important to our area. This area of Kentucky didn't have electricity or running water in the 1930s and 40s. The people here were very isolated. 77% didn't have access to library services. The mountain people didn't communicate with their neighbors a lot, and they didn't communicate with the outside world ever. The books that the Pack Horse librarians brought them were their way to communicate and know what was going on in the world. The librarians brought so much more to the people than just books. Medicine, mail, messages, and especially the news of the day. It gave the people a way to communicate with the world around them. Look at this quote. Those books you brought us saved our lives. It was the President of the United States, Franklin Roosevelt, who made it available as part of his New Deal program. The Work Progress Administration created a library extension program that brought many jobs to women and books to Appalachia. It began in 1935 by Lena Knopsire, who was the first state librarian. But it was FDR's wife, Eleanor, who was the real catalyst for this project. She fought for the Works Progress Administration to take over in 1936, and when that happened, it really helped communication in southeastern Kentucky through sharing books. Here she is going to one of the Pack Horse Librarian headquarters. It's like the bookmobile, just with horses instead of this bus. One of the first bookmobiles in Kentucky was in Bell County in 1946 because of the influence of the Pack Horse Library. Today, Kentucky has more bookmobiles than any other state. Wow, I bet these women never thought they'd be influencing our ability to communicate in 2021. I'd love to know more about these brave women. I'd love to actually experience what they did. When it started, there were 107 librarians in 50 counties. Out of those, 96 were women and the rest were men. One of them said, everybody wants me to stop and talk. They hear radio reports, sometimes just parts of these, or rumors, and they don't understand and are excited and worried. I tell them how I see things and it helps. Now let's learn more about two specific Pack Horse librarians, Grace Lucas and Nan Milan. I better get my saddle bag packed. My horse is ready to go to every house on Pine Mountain today. I just wish I had a road to follow, but for now, the creek bank will have to do. Let's see, the kids love the adventure books while the men want to read about the Civil War, but the women prefer the recipes. Grace and I need to finish up our scrapbooks that we're making out of old books that people can no longer read, too. Let's see, and I can't forget Mr. Smith's medicine. I also can't forget this sweet letter to a grandmother that's going to inform her about her new grandbaby that's being named after her late husband. I tear up just thinking about it. Hey, Nan, I brought a copy of Heidi and Swiss Family Robinson. They're very popular among the kids. Thanks, Grace. Hey, how about we work on some scrapbooks? So, how are your kids doing? Better since the WPA put me to work. I can actually support them on my $28 a month salary. And your husband? Has he come back? No way. I kicked him out ever since he saw my fried chickens for moonshine. So, how many miles did you get this week? Well, I'm averaging 90, but I think I'll get more than that this week. Yeah, me too. Since I started renting a horse for 50 cents a week, I'm able to cover four counties. True, but fording those creeks takes time, and those mountainsides. I swear my horse must have shorter legs on one side, so we don't go sliding off those steep mountains. Yeah, there's no spot where I have to leave the horse. One wrong step would take us right off the edge, but it's worth it to see the looks on the kids' faces. It breaks my heart to go into their log cabins and see their pale, hunger-stricken faces in threadbare clothes. One mother insists I stay for dinner, even though I know they don't have enough to feed themselves. But I'm their only form of communication with the outside world. They keep me as long as they can. I delivered a book on canning to an old lady the other day who told me about a sick child in another cabin. What I found was a seven-year-old girl sitting on a homemade pallet, her pot-smoking grandmother next to her. I read to her for a while, then left her some picture books. I'll never forget what she said to me as I got up to leave. Learn me to read, book lady. Please, if you learn me, I won't be so lonesome anymore. Think about how far we've come in the two years since the WPA took over. I can remember those early days of avoiding moonshiners. Yeah, and even with us being local people, they were so suspicious of us. One family makes me read the Bible out loud to all of them. Then they trust me enough to read books for the kids. Do you remember the farmer who met me screaming, Get it! Get book lady! My children ain't been doing their chores since you've been bringing them books! Get it! 
the farmers do not want to extend the winter during the crop months, do they? But they allow us to bring them through. <clears throat> After they finish hoeing the corn. <laughs> but being there for these people during these hard times is so important. We're welcome black queens practically everywhere we go. I thought my job really had status here. The people are starved for communication and experiences with the outside world. And books give them this. We give them this. Yes, we do. I make sure I visit every house at least once every two weeks to trade books and magazines for new ones. Plus, I love your, our monthly visits here at the Pack Horse Library headquarters. Yes, and we get to trade materials, and I love taking these old magazines and books that other people throw out and turning them into new scrapbooks for the people. I think this one looks pretty good. Sometimes, I think that the people around here are just like the sights and sounds of a new human being. That's true. I love approaching the school full of children. They hear the horses' hooves and they know I'm coming. Then I hear their voices. Book ladies coming, book ladies coming. Thank goodness we just got this shipment of donated books. People around the country have really come together to help us, haven't they? From California to New York. I'm gonna get some old Christmas cards so we can use to make new bookmarks. If the people keep dog the pages, the books are never going to last. Well, man, 4.30 comes early in the morning, so I better get going. That's true, Grace. Another day, another 26 miles. And as the program has gone on year after year after year, we have continued to help the people of Southeastern Kentucky with their communication through sharing books. But now, our job is coming to an end. World War II is forcing us into new jobs for our country. I know. We've done a great run spreading communication to the people of Southeastern Kentucky. I hate to see it end. Yes, but we had a good run of it. Seven years, 1936 to 1943. Those Nazis aren't going to defeat themselves, so we will trade on our saddlebags and our horses. And we will no longer be pack horse librarians. We will become... Rosie the Riveters. Good luck to you, Grace, and take care of those kids. I sure will, Nan. Wow, 33,000 books to 57,000 families. When I think about the friendships that I've made during this job, I know just how important our job really was, and I know that these friendships will last. The people of Southeastern Kentucky were greatly influenced by the Pack Horse Librarians. At its height, there were Pack Horse Libraries in nearly every county, and the WPA carried this over to 15 other states. True, but none of them had the lasting impact that the Pack Horse Librarians had. They were able to connect with these people in a special way. They became part of their daily lives. As a matter of fact, Carl Perkins from Knott County sponsored the Library Service Act in 1956. This was the first form of federal money for the Pack Horse Libraries. Growing up, he had been personally impacted by a Pack Horse Librarian and carried this over to service for others. First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt said it best in 1933. <laughs> influenced by these women who braved terrain and oscillation to bring the world to southeastern Kentucky. There are several books on the bookmobile about the Pack Horse Libraries if you would like to learn more. 